Boy, that time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? Boy, it's about that time of day again here, folks. It's Wednesday evening. It's February the 6th. My name is Joseph, and of course, this is your nightly newsletter. You know, I help traders earn consistent, reliable, dependable, predictable profit every morning in our trade room using a simple three-step trading strategy. But my plan tonight is to identify the most reliable trading opportunities setting up for tomorrow, Thursday's trading session. And we got crude, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and we can't forget about that mighty euro. First up here on the docket tonight is the good old oil market. We survived the weekly inventory report. And of course, this afternoon here, we've got a strong move up into a trading range, bull market into a range. What does that tell me? It tells me buy a little low of that range and boy do I like the combination of these two trend lines for that buy I'm gonna to put together three maybe four different entry patterns we can look for that area for tomorrow so make sure you stay tuned on that for more over on the S&P S&P's yeah, pretty range bound tonight right obviously a very balanced market here there is a long-term bull bias to it we'll see more of that here in a moment but what I really think is the big clue right now on this S&P is the symmetry here. Symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. I'm looking at this area down at that 27.22 for tomorrow for that buy going back up. we got to be careful though because we had a couple things we want to be watching for once we drop down. So I'm going to break that all down into small bite-sized pieces for you guys in just a moment. NASDAQ here tonight, same thing. Big bull run into a range the most important thing right now on this NASDAQ is to get free of this narrow range. I'd like to, just like on the s and I'd like to use some symmetry here to find some areas down here. Use that, right? Use that reversal line to start building a position here as we go back up and retest that high. We get some news for the NASDAQ traders tomorrow, so stay tuned on that. We're going to break the news down here. In a few moments, we do have some big news tomorrow for all you NASDAQ traders. And of course, over on the gold, we can't forget about the yellow metal. Yellow metal, of course, spent a lot of the last 36 hours or yeah, about, about 36 hours trading inside of that range. But then, of course, now we see that nice big one, two, three breakout. And then, of course, with that breakout, I'm going to mark up that low. I'm going to find that hidden channel. And, of course, I'm going to look for a couple different entry patterns here. Now, it's definitely going to be a bear market right now, but I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't also keeping an eye on a possible whoop, whoop, whoop right back up into that range tomorrow. So we'll definitely put that plan together in just a moment here on gold. So stay tuned, right, for all you gold bugs out there. How about that euro? Boy, the euro obviously bearish. We keep on... Keep on rolling lower here on the euro. We're sitting now at the big round number at 14,000. And uh, I, got, I got one really big clue on this chart right now. No, it's not the battle zone. No, it's not the trend lines. No, it's not the channel. I got one really important thing. This chart is just screaming at me right now. And of course, I'm gonna break that down and put the plan together here on that Euro in just a few moments. We got everything ready for tonight, right? Got a great video in store for you guys and gals tonight. Before we jump into those charts though, I just wanna remind you, make sure you never miss another great newsletter video, right? Head over to the blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. I'll put the links in the description of the YouTube video. Head over to the blog at Sideways Markets and make sure you join our mailing list. Give me your name, your email address, and then hit that subscribe now button. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna email you a welcome email with all kinds of goodies in there. So make sure you check your email and then that way you get all the good stuff in your inbox. And of course, I'll start sending you an email every evening. Promise no spam. I never waste your time. I hate spam too. I'll send you an email every time I publish something new. And then also, don't forget too, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Monday through Friday, we open up our trade room. I'd love to have you there with me. We're going to execute this strategy with all of our clients tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. If you can't be here tomorrow, the next best thing, of course, is going to be to get your hands on all of the the charts that we'll be using for tomorrow's trading session. If you want to grab all the charts from tonight's video and be ready for tomorrow's session, there's a big button right below the video tonight here on the blog that says grab those charts. Grab those charts and that way you're ready for tomorrow's trading session. And of course, what if you have any questions? You get any questions for me here? Questions, comments, concerns? I want to help as much as I can. That's the comment section is for. If you have any questions for me, hit me up below the video. 
in the comments section. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up, right, if you see value in this presentation we give you guys every evening. And then don't forget to, don't forget, I'm always here if you need anything. Call that toll-free phone number in the upper right-hand corner. I, I know, I know, I'm old school. I still use a telephone to, to actually talk. Yeah, it actually rings, and I answer it, and I answer questions, and I love talking to you guys. So give me a call there anytime, right? You guys want more information about newsletter, trial, membership, right? Any questions you got, call that toll-free phone number in the upper, right, upper right-hand corner, and I am excited to talk to you. Yeah, the phone actually, the phone actually does ring. It, it really does ring. All right, let's jump right in. You guys are busy people. You guys are busy people here. All right. We survived. We've survived a lot of the, the, the junk here this week. We had the State of the Union last night, right? A lot, a lot of good reaction today from that speech last night from President Trump here in the U.S. But now here we are. It's a Thursday morning. Tomorrow is Thursday, February the 7th. What's the plan for tomorrow? Tomorrow is a relatively uneventful day tomorrow. Uh, the big news tomorrow morning as Kind of, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be rude, but as, as pathetic as this is, it's probably going to be the BOE announcement at about 7 a.m. Eastern time. That's really the only news that we can see on the calendar for tomorrow. Now we still haven't heard, right? We still haven't heard about the U.S.-China trade talks, right? We still haven't heard a lot of things, right, about the uh, uh, about the ongoing negotiations right now in the White House or in or in Washington D.C. You know, political negotiations. So we might hear more about that tomorrow. Uh, really, though, you know, it's, it's the it's the BOE. We announce it tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Eastern time, trading the euro, trading gold. You definitely want to be watching, right, that 7 o'clock hour tomorrow morning. As far as the U.S. session goes, you know, again, we open up our trade room every morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. We don't have a lot to work with tomorrow. The jobless claims are meh. They're not really going to move markets around that much. Our big thing tomorrow is, is tomorrow afternoon, we get those NASDAQ Right, earnings reports coming out tomorrow. I believe it was Twitter tomorrow afternoon is the big is the big uh, uh, headliner tomorrow. Definitely, you know, Twitter's obviously not your Amazon, your Facebook, right, your Netflix, but it is a member, right? It is a member of the Nasdaq. It is going to be probably the most uh, uh, the most active uh, 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 earnings report tomorrow coming out of that Nasdaq tomorrow. Don't forget, head over to Google, right? Nasdaq earnings calendar. If you're if you're a Nasdaq trader, right, like we are in our trade room, make sure you know. Right when those earnings are going to be right coming out tomorrow night, though, right tomorrow night, if you're a NASDAQ trader, and of course, don't forget tonight. We're going to put this plan together. We're going to get together tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We're going to trade the plan with all of our clients. Not a lot of news tomorrow, so we'll be keeping our eyes and ears open. The best opportunities right now are happening between 9.30 and 11 o'clock Eastern time. So we'll, we'll be there tomorrow morning early. We'll get all prepped up, and we'll look, for some, we'll look for some more great opportunities like we saw today in our trade room. All right, let's jump right in. We got the news under control here. I've got our big five here tonight. We got crude, S&P, NASDAQ, gold. And of course, we can't forget about that mighty euro. We'll wrap up tonight on that euro. Three big clues tonight on the oil. First big clue is the bull momentum, right? Very strong bullish momentum. What does bull momentum tell me to do? Well, it tells me to look for that two-legged pullback and a retest of that high, right? Anytime we see a bullish market like this, we always look for that nice two-legged pullback and a retest of that high. Now, second clue, trading range, right? What does that range tell me? This is kind of a weird one. I think this range could probably be a little bit larger, but I think the meat and potatoes of this range are between the 08 and the 91. Why do I care? Why does it matter? Why why not just make it a bigger range like that? You can, but one of the things I've learned in my oh boy, almost 15 years watching charts is that by finding the right range, I'm able to take the size of that range and find some key levels of support, right? See, if I take that range and I copy and paste, right? And I copy and paste and I bring it down like that, that creates that nice level of support there. So when I know we have a bull market and I know I want to buy after a two-legged pullback, that trading range is really nice to know where that range is because it's not the range itself, it's the range expansion levels that give me some key support. That's a very enticing level of support down there. And then I got to be honest, right? Toss out the range because the trend lines in the chart right now are really what get me excited. I've got a rising support trend line. That's obviously a great level of support. But really though, 
we saw one of these on gold last week, if you recall, right? It's like a it's like a falling resistance line that can be used as support. And of course, put all three of these clues together. Bull momentum says, right, two-legged pullback for retest of the high. Trading range says, yep, find that major support, right? And then of course, trend lines, right? Those all come together here too as well. So we just have a just a stew here right now of great support levels down around that 53 half, 5350, right? 5360, 65 and change down there. So that's what I want to do, right? But I want to be ready for everything tomorrow. What if price goes up? What if price goes down, right? What if what if price goes sideways? You know, then then what do we do? Okay, let's put it together here. First of all, right? What if this market pulls back? Right? Let's dig in here. What if this thing pulls back? If we pull back off the high, then what's the plan from there? Remember, we pull back off the high. That's that two-legged pullback. We're right in the sweet spot now to start looking for those buying opportunities. So what I'm going to do is, is I want to see this thing really pull back. Now, I really don't care how far it pulls back. At the very least, I'd like to see it pull back to this reversal line at 65. But let's say we get a nice deep pullback. As we get that pullback coming down, you are undoubtedly going to see sellers who are going to think this market is a bear market, and they're going to try to sell off that next pullback. The problem is momentum is not bullish. Mom sorry, momentum is not bearish. Momentum is bullish. So with that pullback, the odds aren't very good for those sellers. That also tells me, right, once I see that pull back to the moving average, now I know where stops are, right? Now I know where this becomes really painful for those sellers. So anybody who sold off that moving average, where's their stop going to be? It's hanging out right above that high. And speaking of high, right, that's going to be where I'm looking for my first entry going back up to retest the high. I call this a failure pattern, right? A failure pattern coming off of that, again, coming off that trend line, coming off that range line, right? Using that support level. Now, once we get that market running higher here, I got to be careful. I don't want to buy into resistance. I want to buy at support. So where's a great support level? Moving average comes over and I can look for that buy right on the way back up from there, right? So now the same level that we got in on the failure is the same level I can look for that pullback. You can either go half position, half position, or like what we do in the trade room is, right? We've got a first target and look to add to our position to ride right to ride that route that 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 wave higher right failure pattern and a pullback pattern now there's one more thing i want you to keep in mind here and that is as we go lower we may be a chance to draw this trend line right if we can draw a trend line down now we can actually use that trend line as a one two what we call a two-legged pullback right we call these two-legged pullback patterns one leg two leg and then what do we do we look to buy off that trend line we call these two legged pullbacks or two lps so we've covered three specific entry patterns down here failures pullbacks two legged pullbacks right i want to teach you all of my favorite patterns but unfortunately i've only got so long here with you guys on youtube so if you want to learn all my favorite entry patterns and really everything in between i'm going to put a free trading class for you in the upper right hand corner grab that link if you're here on the blog right now at sideways markets there's a big red button right below the video tonight on the blog grab that big red button join the free trading class learn more about my favorite patterns everybody loves the free trading course right i think you will as well now what if we keep going sideways here right what if we keep going sideways here then what do we do right then what do we do what if we keep going sideways here now if we keep going sideways not a lot changes right so if we just stay you know sitting here going sideways not a lot changes we want to stay away from the middle i want nothing to do with that middle what i will do is though is keep waiting one try to try failure back up see if we keep going sideways inside this range right now that balance becomes even bigger right it becomes even bigger what i like to look for is once a market goes sideways inside of a range i look for a breakout no 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 i'm not going to waste your time with those kitty strategies about trading breakouts because we all know breakouts don't work and if you don't know if you haven't learned that lesson yet right i hope you take my advice 
avoid the breakouts, and look to do the opposite, fade the breakouts. So instead of trying to trade the breakout lower, what I'll do is I'll let that big breakout go lower. I'll let those sellers try one more time, and then I'm gonna look for that nice big buy going back up into that trading range. Again, it's a two try failure pattern if the market goes range bound. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, that's all fine and Danny Joe, but what if we go higher here? Come on, man, right? Give me some, what, what if this thing blasts higher here? So if it blasts higher outside of a range, you're probably gonna see one of two scenarios. Either one would be a small spike in channel. In other words, strong move up, pull back, another leg higher. Okay, you gotta be really careful trying to buy just a strong breakout because you can see what happened over here, right? It'll come collapsing back in. Be very careful buying up here because a good chance it'll come right back in. In fact, I will be looking for that sell if we struggle up here, one, two, right? We'll use what we call that nested two try. I took a lot about, I talk a lot about those nested patterns inside that free course that I mentioned in the upper right hand corner. But the bottom line though is, what if it goes higher here? One, two, three, breakout, mark up that low, mark up that high, yep, and then we'll find that hidden channel, and of course, I'm gonna buy off the low of that, right, of, of that hidden channel, right? Hidden channels are one of my favorite support and resistance levels to use. I don't draw channels like a lot of people draw them. If you wanna learn all the, all the tricks that I use here, again, take that free trading course. I go into a lot more detail about how I draw channels, how I draw trend lines, et cetera, et cetera. You may also see too, if we go higher here, we may also see something like this where it really runs. And in that case, right, we can draw a larger spike in channel. We'll have to play this by ear and see how this goes, right? But that would obviously be the ideal because that would mean a much bigger move, a much bigger momentum, right? That would be ideal. But usually what happens though on these ranges is they're gonna go one, two, three. Once we see that third leg higher, then we go up, find that channel, mark up that level, right? And look for that move, right? And look for that move as it gets that as it gets that pullback. All right, guys, that's the plan for oil tomorrow, right? Don't forget, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I will see you guys in our trade room to execute accordingly. How about some S&P right now? Well, yeah, we're range bound. I've got three big clues on the S&P. First clue is that bullish momentum. What momentum? Oh, okay, this momentum, yeah. You gotta zoom out a little bit here. The NASDAQ's a little bit easier to get your hands around, right? Yeah, it's that bull momentum, that bull momentum, right? Very strong bull move into this trading range. I'm not usually somebody who likes to use multiple days of information, but this is pretty darn dramatic. I would imagine a lot of buyers are waiting down here, right, to buy off of these lows of the range. So. I was, I'm tempted to call it neutral. I was, I, was, I was quite tempted here to call this a neutral range because you can see as far as today goes, I mean, in fact, I mean, as far as today goes, there's almost more of a bear bias because you got lower highs and lower lows there. But I'm gonna give it an overall bull bias. That bull bias tells me look for buying opportunities below the low of that trading range. Now, right, with that bull momentum, into that range, right? First clue is bull momentum. Second clue is that trading range. It tells me buy below the low of that trading range. And then what I really like here is, is this hidden channel. Third clue on this chart is let's draw off of those highs. Let's bring it down to that low. Mm -mm -mm. Combine that now with symmetry, one, two, and three. And this whole area down here really becomes a very attractive area now to be a buyer. Now there's one challenge though as we go lower, right? Let's break this down here on the right on the E-mini. How do I buy low? How do I sell high? Well, first of all, let's get this out of the way. You guys know where all these are now, right? So let's get rid of that. Okay, now we get the chart cleaned up a little bit more here. Now you can see what we're dealing with here, a little bit cleaner here. Now, there's a couple things I'm looking for right now. Two basic scenarios you wanna think of here on the S&P because in all reality, this could be seen as nothing more than a triangle. And anytime I see a triangle, I always know the edges of the triangle are gonna be the hot spots. 
So here are two patterns to consider for tomorrow. One is going to be the short-term pullback, right? One is a short-term pullback. Now, this, of course, will be reacting to that 25 and a quarter area that I have marked up here. Okay, so imagine now we get the pullback. It's not a deep, deep pullback, you know, down to this area, right? But it's a, it's a relatively shallow pullback. Moving average comes over. I'm looking because it's a range. I'm looking for the one, the two, and then back up. Again, it's called the two try failure pattern, right? One, two, and we're buying as the market goes back up into that trading range. That's one of the two patterns I'm watching for tomorrow. The second example of this is let's say this thing just takes off, right? Let's say it runs lower here and it looks like it's never coming back, right? If it does make that strong move down, the next step from there is, is to respect the momentum, right? It's going to be a very strong momentum move. And instead of looking for your standard one, two back up, I'm going to look for a little bit more evidence from what I call a nested two try, which would be where I'm looking for the sellers to try once, wait for them to try twice, and then look to buy into their stops. So why do I change my plan? Why is the plan a little bit different? It's all about momentum, right? Momentum really is the most important word in the trader's vocabulary. If we get a nice deep pullback here, that momentum is really strong. I'm not going to want to just buy right into it. What I'll do is I'll wait for it now, one, two, and then once they fail after that second try, then I'll make the move and look to buy this thing going back up into that trading range. If it just gives me a shallow pullback, I don't need to worry about all that momentum. I can look for the one, two, and then back up we go right inside that range. Remember, stay out of the middle, right? The middle of these ranges are always really nasty. Whenever I see a market with this clear of a range, I always encourage my clients and I try a lot, right, very hard myself to stay patient and get way outside those ranges. Really get way outside, then wait for it, right, as it goes back up into that trading range. Now, that's the buy side. The buy side's relatively easy here depending on where we get that pullback to. How about the sell side? Is there a scenario where we could sell this market? Sure, there definitely is. The problem though is with that momentum being so bullish, I have to use that same nested technique to sell off the high. Let's say, for example, we go up right into that battle zone between 37 and 35 overhead. Now again, we're bullish. Right? I don't want to buy up here because, again, it's a range. I don't want to buy high. When I have a trading range, I want to buy low and I want to sell high. Now, we'll talk about what a breakout looks like here in a second. But if we jump up, the last thing I want to do is chase after it. And I don't want to buy high here because, again, we're top of the range. So what I'll do is I'm going to let the buyers try once. I'll let them try again. And if I see these buyers are trying once and trying twice and they're still not getting that run through, yeah, now we know exactly where stops are and we can sell right into those stops, tumbling back down into that trading range. Again, it's the same basic idea, right, as if we get that deep move lower. One, two, back up. If I get that strong move up, I'm trying to sell, which of course is against the overall market's momentum. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go one, I'm gonna go two, and then look for that drop back down into that range. These variations of these failure patterns are all based on momentum. And again, don't forget, I've got, I mean, at this point, probably over 100 different examples of those directly from our trade room. Grab that free course. It's in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that big red button. Join the free course. You'll see what I mean, right? I'm going to send you hundreds of examples, right, of those real patterns that we see. That way you can pick up on, right, some of the, some of the things we do every day in our trade room. Now, what does a breakout look like, right? I mean, certainly this market breakout, what would a breakout look like, up or down? Anytime we look for a breakout, we look for that one, two, three breakout, right? That one, two, three breakout pattern. Now, you can see from experience here that strong breakout fails, strong breakout fails, strong breakout, strong breakout. All of these strong breakouts fail. So if you think that a strong breakdown is enough to get this thing out of this range, right? I would. I would encourage you to be more careful. What we need is, yes, we do need a strong move down. What we need now, though, is, is we got to pull back to that moving average and then jump off that moving average. If we can get a one strong move down, two pull back to the moving average, and three a jump off the moving average, I have no problem calling this now a bear market. Now, what's the trade from there, though? 
right? How do we trade it? Do we chase after it? Do we just hope it keeps going lower? No, not if we want to be consistently profitable. We don't. What do we do, right? We mark up those lows. We mark up that low. And then what do we do? We bring it up, find that hidden channel, right? That hidden channel. I know it sounds weird, right? But I draw channels. I draw, I find resistance levels by drawing support levels first. I learned that trick a long, long time ago, and we use it every day in our trade room. That's the sell as we go lower. Same thing going higher. Now, going higher, you would think it'd be a little bit easier because it's a bull market, right? So one, two, three. Once we see that one, two, three, again, one is a strong move up. Two is the pullback, right? Three is the move higher. You can see they've given us some tries here, right? One, two, no, not enough, right? So this always, this always a good, right? A good healthy amount of trying. One, two, no, back down to the range, right? So if we can get that one, two, three, if we can hold that breakout now, mark up that high, mark up that high, find that hidden channel again find resistance to then be used as support and then of course we'll use those failures two-legged pullbacks right and of course those pullback patterns as we go back to the low of that right of that channel that's the plan there on the s p the hardest part right now on the e-mini is staying away from that middle so promise me you won't fiddle with that middle right mama always reminds us right don't fiddle with that middle don't fiddle with that middle all right let's get back to the nasdaq here now again we talked about this in the, in the introduction We've got that. We got some earnings tomorrow morning, or sorry, tomorrow afternoon right, on the NASDAQ. So get to it while you can tomorrow on the NASDAQ. Uh, three big clues, right? Three big clues. One is this overall bull momentum, right? A bullish momentum tells me two-legged pullback and a retest of that high. Second big clue is a trading range. This range has a bullish bias to it. What does that tell me? Buy low, buy low, buy low right by below the low of that range again because the range has a bullish bias to it you can sell high right but you just have to make sure you get that nested to try right up one two and then down right up one two and then down right sell into it up one two and down Right, so it's okay to sell in a bull market. You just got to do it with the right entry pattern. And again, I I know I'm beating a dead horse on this, but I talk a whole lot about those variations inside that free course, which is linked up right either in the upper right hand corner or below, or below the video tonight on our blog. The third clue here, right? The third clue now is are the trend lines. Trend line coming down, trend line coming up. That creates a bit of a triangle. Honestly, I'm not so worried about the trend line coming down. What I'm most worried about is that bad boy, right? You can see that guy means business. You know, in fact, in my world, anytime you've got a trend line with more than three touches, right? Anytime you get a trend line with more than three touches like that, that's usually that's usually your cue that you've got to respect that trend line. You can see they did that on the fourth and fifth touches. So this trend line could, this one could make things pretty nasty out here uh, because obviously as we try to get that pullback and buy, we don't want to buy into that trend line. So we got to find a way to get in long, right, with some sort of trap down here or we got to get through it and over it for tomorrow. So there are two specific patterns that I want to use here right now to try to get into the trade and then hold on to it as we go back up to retest that high. What I really think is a huge clue right now on this chart, and I kind of ran out of space here on the three big clues. I wasn't gonna go four big clues like, like last night. But the bottom line though is, right, is this big strong move down? You might notice I've got it circled there on that chart. You know, what do we always talk about whenever we have a big move in one direction? expect another leg right so that's kind of tips me off right there that i think we're going to probably see this nasdaq gravitate down to that 69 60 69 65 area right into tomorrow again anytime i see a strong move in one direction anytime i see a strong move in one direction we typically see usually it's a symmetrical leg sometimes it's a little bit more a little bit less so we got that big move down which is why i had it circled there to remind me to talk about that with you guys tonight because that strong move down tells me yeah we're probably going to see that next leg lower and i can imagine where that leg's going to put us around 6960 so we're looking at 6960 here for tomorrow and then of course we got that trend line coming down overhead so we're going to definitely want to put that plan together here as well. So trend line is a big clue. Let's get that on there nicely as if you guys to see. 
Okay, perfect. Got the measured moves there. That looks good. Let's trim off the pendulum swings. You guys will you guys will learn all about those pendulum swings inside of our classroom sessions. But the bottom line though is, right, we know kind of where we're looking for these sellers to exhaust and where we're looking for these buyers to find our way in. Now, if we get the pullback here, there's gonna be two things playing against me. One is the strength of the pullback, and two is the right, is that is that trend line. Right? So one thing is is the strength of that move lower, right? Big, big move down. If this thing really runs, if it really runs down to that 65, 60 area, you know, again, give or take a few ticks there. But if it really runs lower here like that, that momentum is very strong. So what pattern? And of course, the pattern will be in a faster time frame. I don't trade a 4,000 tick chart, right? We trade uh, a 1,000 or 800 tick chart, right, each morning in our trade room. And again, you can learn all the details inside of that free trading course. But assume we go running lower here, that momentum, right, that momentum is going to be too strong just to buy. So what do we do? We wait for the nested to try, right? We wait for those bears to try once, right, try twice, and then we can buy back up, right? Wait for those bears to try once to sell the pullback, try twice to sell the pullback, again, on a faster time frame, and then we usually that will create a rising support trend line, and it'll give me a chance to buy right off that second try. But wait a second, though. That doesn't solve the problem. The big problem here is we got that trend line, right? So how do you avoid buying high? How do you avoid buying into resistance, right? How do you, how do you avoid the most easy stopouts? Don't buy into resistance, buy low. How do you buy low when the market's trying to slam higher? I look for a specific pattern called a crown reversal. One move down, then let those sellers try again. One more time, trap low. This is going to be the cat's pajamas tomorrow. If we can get, if we can get that crown reversal tomorrow, and again, it's very, very similar, right, to a nested two try. We're gonna get that strong move down for the bears. Let those sellers try once. Let them try twice. But there's one key difference in this illustration, and that is the trap pattern, right? The trap entry. Now, now, why are why are traps so valuable? Because not only do they rope in the sellers in this situation, but when those sellers realize they're wrong, right, they got to quickly get out. And when they get out, right, it's just kind of slingshots the price higher. Psychologically, too, the buyers in this market know, they know that trend line's there. It's, it's easy, right? You can easily see it. And so because those buyers know, they're going to be weary buying, right, buying high up here. They're going to be looking for that trap low right? So how do you avoid, right? How do you avoid some of the most common pitfalls, most common, right, uh, reasons for losses? One of the most common reasons for losses is you're buying into resistance. How do you avoid buying into resistance? Look for traps, right? Same thing happens in trending markets just before we complete an objective. So that's the specific, very fine-tuned pattern that I'm looking for tomorrow morning to make sure I'm not buying into that level of resistance. Then where from there? Then we try to get back up. And then of course from there now, it's a breakout pullback and we can use that, right? We can use that trend line. Okay, so the trend line was, the trend line is gonna be a bit of a pain in the butt tomorrow morning, but if we can get back above it, we can use it as a buy going right overhead. So it's a trap low into a two-legged pullback, right? This will, be, this, will, this will basically be a one two-legged pullback. All right, two great patterns if we get that nice deep move lower. Now I know what you're thinking. Joe, how does the market turn bearish? We need to see a one, two, three breakout, right? So one, two, three, right? It's got to really push one, two, three. If I see this thing pull back to that moving average and we see sellers just crushing it off that moving average, I am no longer going to be able to buy this market any longer. I'm going to have to look at this as a trend now and we'll now look for that sell off the high. That does not mean that eventually we may not end up back in that range late in the day tomorrow, but if we get that strong one, two, three, again, one, two, three off of that moving average, I have to respect it and I have to look for that sell right off the top of that channel. And then of course from there, right, where's our target? Yeah, target's pretty easy at that point, right? Target now goes back to that 69.30 area, which in that case should be pretty easy if we get that real sharp 
break down. So really, really good stuff there on the NASDAQ. And again, that's if we go lower, right? What if we go higher? If we go higher here, we're bullish. There are two scenarios to look for as we go higher here. One would be the one, two, three, that breakout. Yep, the, the knife cuts both ways, guys. Find that new hidden channel, right? Find that new hidden channel. And again, watch that sweet spot right there, right? That's where you wanna be buying. Get that, get that buy pattern. Again, we'll look for the specific buy patterns once we get there. Pullbacks, two-legged pullbacks, failures, trap patterns. Again, you'll learn all about those inside the free trading course. But what, wait, 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 wait. What if we just, what if this thing just goes up and then what do we do then? Do we buy that one? No, 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 right? Got to hold, got to go, right? It's got to go through it. It's got to pull back and go. I mean, we, I mean, how many times have we seen real strong moves that fail? Lots of times in this range bound market. So instead of buying that pullback, look to fade it. Now remember, it's bullish. So the best way to fade a bull market is one, two, and then down, right? Let them try once, let them try twice, and then look out below, right? Down back into that trading range. So a lot of potential momentum swings here in the NASDAQ. Keep your eyes open tomorrow afternoon. We got the old Twitter earnings tomorrow, right? And of course, right, we'll be there tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We'll be charts up, ready to rock and roll on that NASDAQ. Over to the gold, right? The yellow metal. Let's see what we got going on in the gold right now. Uh, three big clues tonight. First clue is that bear momentum, right? I think it's pretty obvious this is a bear market. We had a range bound mark going into today's session. We saw a one, two, three breakout. Okay, that gives the bears control. Now remember, right, this is the same plan as I've been talking about for the rest of these charts. Once we see that one, two, three breakout, what do we do? We mark up that low, we find that new hidden channel. This one's this one's more dramatic because of that low back here. You know, and again, I'll teach you more about those hidden channels inside of our classroom sessions. They're also included up there inside that free trading course that I mentioned earlier, right? So bear momentum, right? Hidden channel is my second clue. Fits like a glove. I've got that nice hidden channel. That's going to be a key level of resistance here overhead. And then, of course, reversal line. Always, always, always love those reversal lines. A level of support that can be used as a level of resistance. But wait, 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 don't forget me. Yeah, there it is back there too. That's another reversal line there. Now, I honestly, at this point, I hope we get a little bit lower here because it looks to me this might be one, two, and then three here. So it, it looks that like we may have some symmetry going lower here. So this thing may go a little bit lower on the chart, but you know, I hope it does honestly, because if we can get it go a little bit lower, then it will really line up there nicely. You know what I mean? If they pull back right now, it's gonna be a little bit off kilter, but if they can go a little bit lower here, then pull back, ooh, there we go, right? That's gonna be a great spot to combine that reversal line along with the top of that channel you know, anytime, anytime we can toss together a couple different levels like that, that really, well, let's put it this way, it definitely doesn't hurt. So what's the plan gonna be there, right? What's the plan here? How are we gonna get short off this? And what would it look like for this to turn, to turn long, right? It's, it's bearish right now. What would it look like to turn long here? Uh, both sides of it. Okay, so first of all, the sell side here. The sell side's relatively easy, right? I wanna get back up to the high of that channel. That will probably put us above that moving average, I can now look for that two try failure pattern. Let those buyers try once, let those buyers try twice. And once we have those buyers trying twice, then I can look to sell right into those stops, right? That creates that two try failure pattern. Now remember, don't chase the market lower here. You don't wanna chase the market lower. You wanna wait now for that market to pull back, right? And then look for that follow through from there. Then of course, as we go lower, I don't wanna chase after the move lower. Final up, right? Final opportunity now would be on a trap, right? So there are three basic patterns that we can look for. One is that two try failure. Second one is that breakout pullback. And then of course, the third one is after we make our money on the way lower, we don't wanna chase after it anymore, but we still wanna follow this thing. We still wanna follow it lower, so what do we do? We look for a trap, right? Because what do traps do? Traps help avoid selling low. Traps help avoid buying high, right? How do you avoid the most common pitfalls? Stop buying so high and stop selling so low. Don't buy into resistance, sell at resistance. 
if you're bullish or you're bearish, right, and you're running into support down here, right, we don't want to sell low, we want to sell high. How do we do that? With traps, right? Avoiding the most common pitfalls, avoiding most of the most common losses, right, come from buying too high or selling too low, right? And let's, not, let's face it, a lot of people just simply don't have the guts to trade up top here. It takes some guts, right? It takes guts to sell high. It does because the market feels like it's going to want to go higher, right? It feels like it. The buyers look very convincing when they buy off that moving average. Believe me, this took me many years to kind of get over that hump in my trading. The real money, the real money is made right before the market reverses. The real money is made right before the market reverses. And a lot of people tell me, or a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you know the market will reverse? I, I, I never know. But what I know for sure is, is the market's momentum is bearish. And whenever I see a strong move down, I know that if I can line up some key levels of resistance here, yeah, I know that I can probably get a good sell off of that level of resistance. Okay, nothing's for sure, but the high, the, the reliability there is really, really good. Now, don't forget, we may also get that two-legged pullback. One, two, back up, right? If we get a two-legged pullback, okay, draw the trend line up, use that trend line now for your sell going back down. And yes, this could also be used, right, as a failure, right, into strength, into pullback, right, and then, of course, into traps from there, too, right? This is a two-legged pullback pattern, right? Two-legged pullback into a failure, right, into a pullback. You'll see these patterns over and over and over again on your charts. Trust me, guys. And then, of course, into those traps. Again, traps, all right, traps are later in the game because you want to make sure you're not selling low right? You want to keep waiting for that, right? You want to keep patient. You want to follow that momentum lower, but you don't want to sell low. So what do you do? After we make that ascent lower, that descent lower, look for those traps, right? As long as, as long as we have good momentum going lower, those traps will keep paying for you. Okay. So that's if the market pulls back here for us. Now, another option would be to consider for tomorrow. What if we go sideways, right? What if this thing starts going quiet and sideways tomorrow? You know, we leave one range, maybe we end up in another range tomorrow morning. Could easily happen. Then what do we do? We take the size of that range, right? Size of the range, copy and paste it up. That creates resistance. And we use that resistance in combination with that two try failure pattern, right? Let those buyers try once, let them try twice. And then of course we'll sell right into their stops once we get that second try. What if the mark goes lower? right? What if we keep gr uh, grinding lower here? Then what do we do? Well, if we keep grinding lower, this will become a spike in channel, right? If this thing keeps grinding lower here, if this keeps grinding lower, this becomes what? Becomes a spike in channel. We talked about this last night, right? Anytime we see a spike in channel, what do we do? We find the base of that channel and we look to sell off the base. So not a lot changes. If it does keep rolling lower, right? Look for the spike in channel. Keep your eyes on that hidden channel top, right? And really make sure you identify the base of that channel because the base of that channel is a very, very common area to sell the sucker going back down to retest that low. Anytime I see a strong move in one direction, I look for that one, two, right? That two-legged pullback and the retest of that low. Right, so that's the plan if price keeps going lower. Now, what would it look like for a reversal right now? What a reversal look like? Well, we talked about the one, two, three breakout, right? The one, two, three reversal. I know I'm, I'm killing you with these names right now. One, two, three reversal. Can you guess what this requires? <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I'm not that unique when it comes to my nicknames. I wanna make them easy to remember, easy to recognize for you guys. One, two, three reversal. Could it be anything like the one, two, three breakout? It sure is, right? One, two, three. That's the reversal, right? Now I know I'm, I'm kidding around with you on this, but the most important thing is, is separation off the moving average right? Separation of the moving average. Look back here. See how we can't get away from the moving average? We can't get away from that moving average, but then look right there. See how they separate from the moving average, right? There's a big open space there between the candlesticks and the moving average. You'll notice it wasn't able to get a good separation before that. Then, bam, that's what leads to the follow through, right? So if we see, right, if we see that that one, two, go, right? Again, it's that bounce off the moving average. If we get that, bingo, now we know we're bullish. Simple as that. 
I've got that trend line overhead. Mark up the channel. You know the drill, right? Find that hidden channel. And the only concern about this one is, is you got that trend line coming down. So we're gonna make sure you buy nice and low. And remember, how do you avoid buying high? You avoid buying high by using what? Traps, right? Traps. So let's say again here, let's say we go up. Let's say we go up. One, two, go, right? One, two, go, we get up. Now, of course, what do we do? I don't wanna buy into the resistance level. What do we do? Traps, trap, 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 right? Look at that trap, right? Why trap? Because a trap allows me now to buy as low as possible, right? Mark it up, mark it up, look for that trap. Again, trap patterns are, trap patterns are the trading God's gift, right? To people getting in late to the move. <laughs> they really are, right? Traps are always essential when you're trying to reverse the trend. They're essential, right? To avoid the most common losses, right? Avoid the most common losses by don't buy, don't buy into that level of support. All right, guys. Now we've talked about down. We've talked about up. Let's keep going. I got one more market for you tonight. We got gold wrapped up here for tomorrow. Gold looks good. Last but not least here, how about some euro? The euro's kind of a sleeper right now. You know, this euro's been a bit of a, it, it's been it's been low volume. There hasn't been a lot of volume lately on it. And there's really a couple really big clues on here, but there's one really important clue on this. There are three big clues in the chart, right? First one, obviously, is the bear momentum. Obviously here, bear momentum, right? Another clue is the reversal line. You'll notice we go down, up, down that reversal line is a huge clue right a huge level of resistance okay reversal lines are constantly being used as levels of resistance constantly being used as levels of resistance you can see good examples right there there's no reason to think that this won't be the same case here on that euro that's a key level of resistance right another big level of resistance is if i take the support trend line and I paste it up overhead, that creates kind of like that little little hidden channel, if you will, right? That'll be a key level of resistance there overhead. But this one big clue here, and that's the second one, no pullback. I mean, there's literally been no deep pullbacks. That tells me anytime I don't see a deep pullback, what does that tell you? It tells you there's a lot of sellers that are just waiting for that next pullback. Now, I don't wanna to get too aggressive on this because I do wanna to try to sell as high as I can. So I'm not, I'm not advocating right now for a very, very subtle pullback here. I'm talking about let's get a nice two-legged pullback so we can sell the sucker back down. That, in my opinion, is the big clue on this Euro. We're obviously bearish. We've got some great levels of resistance here. Overhead, right overhead, this area right there is a great spot for a sell. How do we get into it? Well, I'd like to get this price up into that battle zone. I'd like to get that price to try to buy off the moving average. And then once we see those buyers trying to buy off the moving average, that qualifies for that two try failure. Now we know where stops are, right? And we can sell right into those stops. From there, we don't wanna sell low, what do we do? We wait for that pullback and we go forward from there, right? As we go lower, right? As we go lower off that pullback, we don't wanna chase the move lower, so what do we wait for? We wait for a trap. Again, traps, right? Traps are the trading god's gift, right? To, to people who get in late to the move, right? If you're not in off the, off the failure, if you're not in off the pullback, the last option is that trap. For me personally, I always try to make it a point to get in somewhere up here, right? Somewhere up top. Because then, and we always kind of say in our trade room, you know, how do you attract, how do you attract the big moves? You gotta have big opportunity, right? If I sell high up here, I've got plenty of space now for that big target. If I wait to sell as the momentum starts moving my direction, there's not as much profit down here. So which trade has more reliability? The first one. Right? But again, don't get spooked by the market jumping higher. That's just profit taking. That's just sellers taking profit. When the bears get out of their positions to take their profit, price will jump. It's gonna look very convincing, but we'll look to sell it right as it fails going back down again. Now, we're also down at the round number, so keep an eye on a possible range down here to the euro may eventually find the bottom here. Keep in mind the actual, actual monthly low 
This is last January's low, I believe it is. Could be last January or is it December's low? Um, 13,375. So we've still got some room to go here if this thing is really hunting for last month's low. Um, if it does go sideways, though, if we do see this thing starting to go sideways here, you know the drill, right? One try, two try, back down, right? Find that range expansion level and we'll sell going back down into that range again. If we do see it go sideways here, look to sell up above that range using that one, that two try failure pattern. And then if we keep going lower, if we keep going lower here again, we're gonna pretty much look at the same thing here, guys. We're trying to go up to get that failure into that pullback and back down we go from there. What would a reversal look like? Probably not gonna happen tomorrow. What would it look like? The one, two, three reversal, right? The one, two, and then three. Again, probably not going to happen when we've seen this so far, but hey, there's always there's always potential, right? Always potential. It's better to be prepared than not prepared. Find that high, mark up that swing, find that hidden channel, right? And then we're buying off the low of that hidden channel, right? And of course, the hidden channel could be a failure, right, into a pullback on the way up. It's the same basic pattern structure just to the buy side as we go higher and then boy oh boy if this thing was to reverse tomorrow ah, there's a big move waiting to go back to that 15,000 you know this is a currency so we oftentimes see currencies go from big round to big round number but uh, you know again don't don't make the common mistake don't make the rookie mistake and just, just because we're at support means time to buy we're looking to sell sell off that bounce and again tomorrow morning don't forget we're going to be in our trade room tomorrow morning 8 o'clock eastern time and we're going to execute this entire strategy together. Now, speaking of tomorrow morning, I'd love to see you there with me. Don't forget our advanced members. We trade the strategy together every morning in our trade room. So grab the advanced package to get started tomorrow morning with me in the trade room. But don't forget, too, we've got place for beginner traders here, intermediate traders. But, if, but as always, if you're looking for a great trade room, right, a great video course and all the ongoing support that you need, uh, we offer lifetime memberships for our, for our advanced classes. You can grab more information on our website. And don't forget, I've got a free pass for you. Come out and join me as a guest in our trade room. Grab that free trial. I'll shoot you an invite for tomorrow's trading session, right? It's all there on the website at schooloftrade.com. Again, as I mentioned earlier, guys, we got uh, not a lot of news tomorrow. We got the NASDAQ report tomorrow afternoon, so be aware of that. For all you NASDAQ traders, join the mailing list, grab that free trading class, pick up that telephone, and call me anytime if you have any questions. And as always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other. And if I don't see you guys tomorrow morning in the trade room, be here next time. We'll see you guys next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.